Have you ever seen one person play 10 backgammon matches simultaneously? If not, you're in for a treat. Keep watching as we discuss the first annual Antoinette Marie Williams exhibition in this video. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Let me know what you think in the comments below, what you like to see in future videos, and I'll work on it. If you love backgammon, you can become a member of this channel, giving you exclusive access to the most popular videos. My book, Backgammon, Backgame Strategies, is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested in lessons, please contact me via email. My email address is also in the description. In this video, it's my pleasure to be conducting an interview with two of my good friends uh, from Backgammon, Antoinette Marie Williams and Pete Jarvis. I'll welcome them one at a time. Ladies first, Antoinette, welcome. Hi, Alex. Thanks for having us. My pleasure. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm uh, up to my elbows in, in past work trying to catch up. I'm on my way. I'm on my way to Miami on uh, Tuesday, I believe. And I just got back from Cyprus. So everything is backed up and I'm trying to come up to date between the two tournaments. You travel a lot and have a lot of fun. How was the Cyprus tournament? The Cyprus tournament went very well. I didn't do anything in it, but uh, it went very well. They do Arda, is a, Arda is a very good uh, promoter as well as director. He's fantastic, and I know he's going to be at the upcoming Miami tournament that Avi Cohen is working on, and I spoke with him recently. That looks like it's going to be fantastic as well. I hope so. Great, great. Well, I'm happy to have you. Uh, you're one of a few people uh, in the backgammon community that always has a smile on their face. So I appreciate that. And also, welcome to my good friend Pete Jarvis from the North Jersey Backgammon Club. Welcome. Thank you. How are you Very doing much. today? I'm doing great. How's, how's everything been going? I see you've been getting more people uh, at the North Jersey Backgammon Club. Yeah, one of these nights we'll get them all to show up at the same night. I mean, the the group of people seems to stay, there's a larger pool to draw from, but we never get them all at the same night, but we get up to about eight or so. So I, I feel I'm, I'm happy with the growth. It's only been three and a half months. So we got it up yeah. to about eight people now and it, there's more in it. They just never all come at the same time. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. I think that's, that's kind of how it starts. People will eventually start having their schedules, uh, coordinate with with the event so great right. fantastic congratulations on everything you've done uh i'm excited to be discussing the uh uh first annual Antoinette marie williams exhibition let me go ahead and share this so we can see that this is uh what you put um on the social media can you see that on the screen now yes yes okay, let, me, let me make it a little larger so that we can see, so North Jersey Backgammon Club, Peter Jarvis, director, presents the first annual Antoinette Marie Williams e exhibition fe featuring Antoinette playing 10 matches simultaneously. And this is going to be on January 4th, 2025 at 12 to 5 p.m. I assume that's Eastern time. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. And then here's your contact information. Uh and they, they can contact you. So, uh, Pete, would you like to tell us a little bit about this event and uh, how you came up with the idea? Sure. Uh, I came up with the idea when I was, my son plays chess. He's getting into back time too. He's just player. And I just sort of started watching a little bit of chess. And I liked seeing all those simultaneous matches. And one day I just said to myself, well, I've never seen this in back time. And then, um, that planted a seed in my head that I couldn't, I just couldn't shake it. So I said, well, why not do one and um, see how it goes. And uh, so then I immediately thought of Antoinette uh, and approached her and she was totally receptive to the idea more so, she was, you know, such a pleasure to work with, so enthusiastic and so experienced. So uh, I think we got to, I couldn't be happier with doing chess easy up. <laughs> okay. Well, well that's said in telling you, and you mentioned telling you, the event was, um, it says 12 to 5, 
There are going to be 10 people playing there. And what we'll do is, much like you see in chess, Antoinette will, you know, be at the first person. They'll each make their move. She goes to the next one, next one, next one. By the time she gets around to the circle, the first person will have to have their move done. And then she just keeps firing away until uh, all 10 matches are done. I'll keep That's rolling it. around the room. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. So you've got to have a big room with 10 tables, right? Yeah, well, I've said it. I've, you know, I'm, yeah, I've tested all the setups and everything. In fact, when I had my club meet this past Wednesday, I set a table up exactly the way the tables would be set up with two boards on it to make sure it fit. I tested everything. Um, it's, it's definitely, yep. it's going to be, that's, that all is going to work. And what, when it says 12 to 5, 12 is going to, from 12 to 1 is going to be a sort of meet and greet and there'll be a little food and so forth. I don't know exactly what or how elaborate, but there'll be something. And the idea will just be that folks can come in and the players can get to know Antoinette better. And others, I have some other guests that are invited that I think will come. And then we're going to start playing at 1. And we're probably not going to need four hours, but we wanted to, you know, we pr wanted to make sure we had enough time. They're going to be we free. Wanted, we they're wanted... going to... Sorry, Peter. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was saying they're going to be three point matches. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Antoinette. Please. We we want everyone to to have a good time for it to be fun and not so strenuous, but we want to be relaxed and and because this is a, a monumental event that Peter thought of, um, it's it's going to be interesting. It is. I think that, I mean, I don't, this I don't is know. Certainly... Go ahead. I was going to say that I think uh, Go ahead, Pete, it's please. something that might have be able to have legs. Other people might be interested in it, too. You know, you start with doing it once. If it goes well, then, uh, you know, before you know it, that could be something in the backgammon community as exhibitions or whatever all over the place. Who knows? Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. There are a few questions. One of them you answered it was going to be how long the matches are, and if it's a three-point match, that that'll be kind of kind of easy, you know, to be able to do as opposed to like longer matches. Um, the other question is, um, where how did you find all the opponents? Uh, most of them are are members of a club, and um, Antoinette had, uh, called two of them are her are her friends, and then I found you know some others and just just been putting it all together i've been thinking about this for some months so we just slowly i actually think i have more than 10 people interested so um the that opponent end of it is not not so much uh and so much difficulty to, to yeah one thing yeah one of the things i've learned in these types of situations it's, it's always useful to have someone back a bad as a backup in case someone can't make it but i'm sure you do have plenty yeah well i'm, I'm actually probably gonna be that person because I don't think otherwise I might not be, I might not be playing because I think I have a really lot to do to help the video yeah. guys. I mean I just have a lot to do. Uh, so I want to be able to do that. But if anyone if anyone is unable to make it, I will certainly be the first alternate, and then I will just play. So Antoinette, Wait. have you ever done anything like this before? Uh, no, nothing simultaneous before, never. But there's always a first time for everything. I know it's gonna be. I I think it's gonna be fun to watch. You're gonna have it recorded and stuff. And oh yeah, I gotta it, yes. And then we're gonna uh, you know we'll put it up on YouTube. I think I mentioned with you one time a while back that when when it's finished, could we put it on your channel? And I just yeah, started. Of course. Uh, I just started a YouTube channel for uh, my club. I haven't launched it to everybody yet, but it's now there. And I'm just doing a couple last thing, and it's all to be there. I'll probably put it on my own YouTube wherever we can. It'll, it'll, I'm gonna, you know, try and get it out to as many people as possible. Okay, is your YouTube channel up and running? No, no it is. Oh, okay. I'm the only one who has. A, I'm the only one who can see it, but it is. I'm waiting to get. It. I'm uh, I'm trying to sort out, frankly, the video editing. Um, I've got a couple things of the, the discussions of ours, and you suggested change for for, and um, the video editing. I'm still learning about that, so I'm not gonna actually release it till I learn about that so another week yeah, it's it's a lot of work and actually to yeah, yeah yeah you'll get it down um it takes practice but like like i remember when i was first doing my first videos it was challenging but 
now I've got it down that like I could do multiple videos in one day and it just like things things go on in the background the processing and things like that um so good good what else what else would you like to discuss about uh maybe Antoinette well I'm I'm excited uh about Peter's idea it was uh very shocking to me when he presented it it's like what <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I, it, and it, and it's an honor. It's, uh, you know, for me to be the first, although uh, Paul McGrill did something kind of to this effect where he became X-22. Um, and I'm not sure whether he played chess or backgammon. Uh, I, versus... believe, I believe he had a backgammon tournament with like 32 people against 32 others, like x one through 32 and oh one through 32 and x22 was the one that won <laughs> that's how i understand it um so as i think there's a lot of because those opponents were facing each other right like he wasn't playing all 32 opponents or was he well i what i believe is like he played he played the matches on both sides but i think he played one match at a time oh i see I've been trying to read about it. I've read everything I could find online about it. I'm still, yeah, you know, I, I researched it several times, but I, I didn't understand that. That clears a lot up for me. He was fantastic. Did you ever meet him, Antoinette? Of course, he slept on my couch. My couch, if you can see a little bit of it, it's like <laughs> a red. But we, we were friends. I've known, or I knew Paul from the 70s. Because he he was in New York, he resided in New York, and we played at the Mayfair Club. Um, and there were like at least five different clubs in New York City. It was New York City was the mecca for right. the best players in the world, as well as the the most uh, clubs in the world. Um, but Paul and I, we went back a long ways, and we're very good friends. It was, as far as our knowledge goes, we're not sure of it, but as far as we know, you correct if I'm wrong on that answer, but as far as we know, this is the first time this is being done. And so if, if that is in fact the case, it's, it's, it's a kind of historic event. It's just something that's never happened before. Here we go, and it might go on for who knows. So it's, it's kind of uh, interesting on that level as well. Yeah, I want. I, Are you going to have a lot of spectators coming? Who knows? I mean, we're inviting them and getting the word out, running a newspaper ad and various things. But, you know, I, I don't know how many people are going to. I hope there's some people there. I spoke to some uh, others, you know, other people to come to, but I, I don't want to because I don't want to commit them to something. But, yeah, the, we, I'm hoping to have some there, but you just never know. Uh, I think more than. There's a couple things to sort out logistically, but we do have a couple screens up the way they'll be able to see it from the video guy. Because otherwise it'd be hard for spectators to see the boards. And I, I think it would be kind of boring. Uh, if you're sitting there watching and you couldn't see any of the boards, that would get old pretty quick. But we do have uh, screens up with the monitors where they'll be able to where they'll be able to see it. And we'll just we'll just see. I mean, there's so much that it's all new. There's no I can't predict what's and I don't think Antoinette can either. I don't want to speak for you, Antoinette, but I don't, it's hard to predict it because there's nothing to say, oh, well, when they did it, this happened, you know, there's nothing. Well, to... we, 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 know, we know the back end of community and we know if they feel like showing up, they will. And if they don't, they won't. So, <laughs> but, we, but we do know that, that it will be on YouTube at some point and, and people around the world will may be interested in watching. So we shall see. Yeah, I, th I think it's going to be really exciting. But one of the things that I was thinking about is, you know, Antoinette, you and I have been around to remember before people were recording their matches. And nowadays, everyone records the their matches with a camera it's over the board. And I'm sure you can get a bunch of those and, and have them all recorded it's and even transcribed. Yeah, well, we're going to, there's going to be a, um, a videographer who's actually going to go around, you know, with a pretty easy, he's, he's a professional. With her. Yeah, he's going to go around. Oh, to that's fantastic. He's very creative. 
I've worked with him for years in my concerts, my music. So, um, he's, so he's going to he's going to definitely capture it. No, we don't have uh, cameras over each board. We're not I don't have that kind of equipment yet, or anything yet. But I got to tell you, I'm, I'm as much excited to hope we're contributing something that might be the you know roots of something new in the backgammon community. I mean, I'm obviously really excited for this, for Antoinette, and hopefully my club grows a little from it and all these things. But I'm more long term. You know, I'd like to see uh, people catch on and see people all over the place doing because I think it's a good idea. And we'll find out if it's a good idea. I mean, if it crashes, then maybe it isn't. But uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I, I think it's fantastic. It's, you know, you do these things to promote back in and get people to come in. Right. And we see we see things all the time. Like I'm watching tournaments like all the time. Just yesterday I was watching it and, you know, they're great. But it's kind of the same thing over and over. This tournament, that tournament, just a different location. This is a completely different thing. So it might provide a lot of exposure to that's what, a lot of that's people who wouldn't hoping. otherwise had it. That's, that's what we're hoping for. Yeah, as a director of a fairly a highly acclaimed music group for for many years, and our we were always doing new things we did you know it was always about new new and trying to push things forward the proclamation of new literature everything was new we were always trying to move forward and i think when i started this club it's just a mindset that i've developed over decades in in my music and uh when i was thinking of stuff I was saying what can we do we're going to do a tournament but then i realized i'm not ready and i said what could we do in lieu of a tournament where it could be really cool but at the same time maybe be new and then uh it just hit me while I was watching a chess one. You know, I think once you do this, maybe other people will start doing it too. That's what and I'm hoping. Yeah. Yeah. It would be so Are there I'm any other details about, about the event? I'm very excited about doing it. It would be so, it would be I, I'm excited to change. watch it. Yeah, it would be thrilling to see if they if some started popping up slowly but surely or whatever. But that, that would be that would be thrilling. For me, I would be I would be just yeah. delighted. I you know, maybe maybe it's something I could arrange here at some point. I mean, you there there are a lot of logistical things you have to think about, like the venue, you have to have enough space, you have to have the equipment, yes. all that stuff. But uh, the equipment will maybe be something we can do. The venue is very. Uh, I was going to mention them before I close, but the St. Agnes Church. I want to really send a real profound thanks to them for for you know they've they've donated the facility. I get the venue was donated by the St. Agnes uh, Church in Little Falls. So you know that was that was really really generous and obviously a big help. You have to have a place to do it, and the room is big enough. But I, like I said, we did experiment with that. I set it up one way, sent Antoinette pictures of it, and we talked about why that wasn't going to work. I set it up another way, and then we agreed that that would work. And so, you know, we tried to be fairly thorough about it. But the church has let me get in the hall and experiment, and you know, so they've been they've been great. And that's going to be in northern New Jersey, correct? Yes, Little Falls, New Jersey. Uh, for for people that are not familiar with that area, is that near newark new jersey perhaps uh it's probably about 25 to 30 minutes north west of newark okay and antoinette you live in new york city is that correct yes i live i live in manhattan on the upper west side near columbia university okay so it's not going to be too far a commute to get there for you well it, it it will be because i have to go from manhattan to little falls new jersey so but but it all either a taxi, Uber, some sort of transportation. And what what day of the week will that be? It's a, it's a Saturday. Okay, so hopefully there's not too much traffic on the weekend. Yes, hopefully. You never well, know in New York. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, you never I'll, know. I'll leave in in enough time to get there on time, and yeah, yeah. and and actually to uh, participate in the you know, the cocktail party, so to speak. And Antoinette, you've been very involved in the New York backgammon scene for a very long time. So 
for the viewers, I'd like you, I'd like to give you an opportunity to tell us about that, please. Well, I started playing in 1973. So it's now 51 years later. Um, I love it as much now as I did then. And um, I travel the world. I travel internationally to play in tournaments. And I see people that, that I've known forever, whether they speak, whether we speak the same language or not. It's a family affair. It it's is. like we love to see, we love to see each other. We pro we probably are are like uh, killing each other over the board, <laughs> but 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 we're good friends. We're good friends, and and some of us we laugh and joke during during our matches because it's not it's not so stressful. These these young kids that are coming along today are like uh, addicted to knowing what their PR is and, and studying every day, morning, noon, and night on uh, the computer. Um, that's not me. <laughs> You're um, talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I still love the game. I still love the game. And, and I try to get others. I'm, I'm giving back and lessons in schools. I'm trying to get the mind sport in schools and and I'm I'm doing very well at, at getting that in New York City. And I and hopefully it'll catch on other other countries, some of the other countries like in uh, the United United Arab Emirates, Patrick Gabelli is doing something. There's a guy in Germany, Marcus Ruckenhaupt. Reinhardt. Yeah. He's doing something, and, um, and he's also putting together a storybook of backgammon, like a cartoon book. Uh, and also really? David Sorensen in um, Denmark has also done something with more than 150 kids, teaching oh, them yeah, and, yeah, playing, kids. and playing and playing. So I'm trying. I'm trying to get it universally universally that um we're teaching kids so that when those of us that are getting old and decrepit are no longer on the planet that backgammon will still be alive so that's that's actually a good point because you know i do a lot of interviews with all sorts of people and one of the questions i ask is how do we grow back in? And as you mentioned, getting it into the schools and getting more youth to play is fantastic. And, you know, I personally have initiatives to uh, grow back in and I specifically try to focus on underrepresented demographics such as women and youth. Now, you've been doing this in the schools for some time now, and we've tried to do things, but we've run into challenges as to, you know, getting in contact with the school, having the school agree to it and all sorts of things. What, what would you say are the keys to getting students from, from like youth students uh, to come and learn? How, how do you go about that? Well, uh, one, one of the schools that, that I'm in is it's an after school program and uh, they do, they do various things, basketball and, and other things. And, the activities director has gotten, I've had six kids and I've been doing this since last year uh, where a group of kids, seventh and eighth graders graduated. And so now I have a new group of, of kids that I meet with them once a week and uh, we set up the boards and, and we play. I've got them playing hypergammon, which is an a very easy way for them to learn direction. And even adults, when they're first learning to play, it's the easiest way, I believe, to teach, to start teaching them direction. And and how- What, to, is, what is hypergammon for the viewers, hy please? Hy hypergammon is uh, three checkers starting out on the 24, 23, 22 point in your opponent's board and, and vice versa with them starting out with uh, checkers on the 24, 23, and 22 point. 
and moving around the board counterclockwise and, and clockwise. And it's um, whoever gets their checkers in their home board first and off wins the game. So it, it teaches a lot of combat, so to speak, uh, yeah. to, le to learn how to play the game. That's that's very good. I remember when I first taught my son how to play. What did we do? It was it was basically just bearing in and bearing off. Like all the checkers were in the inner board, and we just bear off, and then kind of go from there, and then eventually get to the midpoint and slowly they'll learn that stuff. But yeah, that, that's fantastic. I yeah, appreciate according to that. the rolls on the dice. Yes. Yeah. So that's what that's that's making it fun and not not making it so difficult to learn from the beginning because there's so much to learn and if you and if you lay it on people all all at once in the beginning it's like mind boggling and they don't want to come back to learn because it's like oh i right. can't handle this this is too much it's like playing it's like trying to teach women and and children chess if you don't make or or yes, and I, I think or school or or when we when we started school to begin with, if a teacher doesn't make it fun and interesting, then you're not going to learn it. That's for sure. So right. when, and, and I think um, go ahead and please. also and and also you have to you have to use words that they'll understand, not complication, not. Just make it easy, just simple and fun. I think I think backgammon is outstanding for children because it it does a number of things. First of all, it's a game, so it's fun, and children lo love playing games, so that's good. But it teaches them other things like discipline, patience, learning how to be a gracious loser, and I I feel like. Backgammon in a sense is a metaphor winner. for life. A, you don't a, know what. And a gracious right. winner too, Alex. Exactly. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah. So in life, you don't know what's going to happen next, but you can move around your assets and liabilities just as you can your checkers on the board to make the likelihood of you winning uh, greater. But there's nothing's always a hundred percent. Yeah. So. That's great. I think those are some of the questions I ask is like, how do, how do we promote backgammon? That's an outstanding thing um, that you're doing. And this event is outstanding. So I appreciate it for both of you. The other question I like to ask um, is, uh, we'll start with Antoinette. What do you enjoy about backgammon? You've been playing it for so long. I think the interaction with different people all over the world, uh, knowing that we have the same thing in common and and we're there to compete and also to socialize because it's it's a social event as well. And just, just meeting, I was in Cyprus just uh, last week and, and there were 40, 43 countries represented. And this was, this was not the maximum amount of of countries that Arda has ever had at his tournament, especially in Cyprus. But just seeing people, I've seen, I, I, there were a couple of people there that I haven't seen in over 30 or 40 years. Really? That were there. Um, and, or, or meeting new people that don't speak, don't, we don't speak the same language, but we speak the same com, common language and back end. Uh, and, and that's what I enjoy. I enjoy people. I enjoy engaging with people. And this is, and this is a way to do that by playing back now. It is fantastic. You've been traveling for a very long time. How many different countries would you estimate you've been to, to play back in? Um, well, in total, I've been to 56 countries and still climbing, but I don't, I can't remember. Probably, I would I would think two thirds of two thirds of that has been for backend. 
So if you were going to give advice, let's say someone wants to go somewhere to play a backgammon tournament, what, what would be the top place on your list or maybe the top two or three? Uh, Monte Carlo. I've been to Monte Carlo like 40 times consecutively. So do you think I like Monte Carlo? <laughs> um, I would say at Cyprus, I've been to Cyprus like 10 times. They've, they've been around 11, 11 years. Um, there are just so many fantastic places. Some of the places that I've been no longer have backgammon. I've been to Egypt. I've been to um, Bali, Mexico. There, there are so many places. Montenegro. Um, there are just so many places to go for backgammon tournaments around the world. Um, and and now there, there, every every state in the U.S. almost has backgammon. So. And I predict, uh, I predict soon North Jersey will be at the top of your list as well. Yes, <laughs> definitely, definitely, definitely. And there are other clubs. There are other clubs opening in New York. It's, it's, New York is is growing again. We had no clubs for a while, but New York is really back on the map. Oh yeah, I know Remy is doing a fantastic job of that, right? Yes, uh, but there are other clubs like the the Clinton Hill Backgammon Club in Brooklyn. Uh, there are a couple of other clubs I can't think of the the name offhand in Manhattan. So it's really really growing. Is there one called the Village Backgammon Club? Yes. Okay, yes. I've heard of, I've seen that on social. Media. I've not been I've not been there yet, but I it's interesting. I live in New York, and I'm only discovering that. There are a couple of clubs in New York, but I will be I will be rolling there, hoping that they're um, uh, accessible for my motorized scooter, my Ferrari. Um, Ferrari, and that I can, that's right. Yeah, and then I can get in and 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 play with them. I feel like it's amazing what people have done with social media. Back in the day, it was like the newspaper and nobody knew about anything. But now you have these people, they get 100, 200 people at an event by putting it on Instagram. Oh, yeah. Well, those are like really social events and and people bring their little, their little backgammon boards. It's like some of them so small, you can hardly <laughs> move a checker on the board. But But they have boards at home. It's like... And and I do give backgammon lessons on the street in the summer and and on a couple of different streets. And whenever people are passing by, we have a we have a tent with the backgammon boards that USB USBGF um, donated at my suggestion to these different organizations. And and I'm always forever saying with people that are passing. And they tell me that they have a backgammon board at home in the closet and they've got grandchildren or children. Bring it out, play, play with your children, you know? So I'm always promoting. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for all of your efforts. And yeah. what about you, Pete? What do you what do you enjoy about backgammon? Besides it just being fun to play, and everybody that I've so far come in contact with has been just so friendly. And as uh, Antoinette says, it's sort of like a big family. I agree with her. But I think from another level, one of the things I like about it where beginners and the most experienced players in the world share one thing in common, at least, probably more than one, but at least one. And that one thing I think is that everybody can still learn more. There is no end game. I don't think anybody has learned everything there is to learn about backgammon. Not, no matter how long you've been playing, no matter how good you are, I'm sure there's something left to sort out. And uh, that I, I like that. I like the fact that it can just it can just go on forever. Uh, there's there's got to be something for everybody to learn. And so I think that's one thing that connects the youngest players, the least experienced players, and the most experienced players. I think that has a direct connection for them because uh, that they have in common. So I, I, I like that a lot. I'm yeah, at yeah, it for 50, 
I'm at it for 51 years and there is so much more for me to learn about this game. Perfect example then, because uh, as I said, you get the very top players and they, as Antoinette just said, they confirmed, they still have stuff to learn. And obviously then, uh, the- Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a lot of fun. I tell people uh, backgammon is easy to learn, but hard to master. The winners are the one who bears off faster. Yeah. <laughs> So great, uh, th- great. I, I really appreciate your time, both of you, and uh, I commend you for all of your efforts you've done, uh, Pete, more recently, and Antoinette, obviously, for, for many, many years. Um, again, we're, we're talking about the first annual Antoinette Marie Williams uh, Challenge. So that's going to be January 4th, 2025. It's going to be uh, very exciting. Do either of you have any final comments uh, before we conclude? This time I we'll definitely start with... do, but Antoinette, go ahead if you say, like you well, said. Well, that... it's, it's, it's going to be a memorable occasion, and I hope that um, people in the surrounding area will will come if they can, and if not, then Look forward to seeing it on YouTube. Yes, absolutely. Very good. Pete, please. Yeah, there were there were um, two things I wanted to mention. One was uh, I want to thank you recently. You had some sponsorship, and I want to acknowledge uh, Merritt and Ardor for helping. And then now uh, Gammon Village has helped, too, and they're becoming a sponsor. So I want to acknowledge the generous sponsors who have uh, joined us in helping out and maybe seem to think there's something here too and helping us make it a reality. So great yes. to them. And one yes. of- I left, I'm oh, sorry the to last thing I was gonna, Yeah, please do. But, pl- but please, we need your help in order to make this a reality. Um, so any, any contributions and donations that people are interested in doing, um, Alex, will you put our information up at the bottom of the site or do what? Uh, yeah, it would be my pleasure. What's the best way for people to contact you? Uh, for me, for me, it's either my phone number is 917-538-7039 or Monte Carlo AMW at gmail.com. Very good. And Pete, is there a way for people to contact uh, you for sure. donations? My phone number, which is 973-800-9185. And my email, which is Peter M. Jarvis at Gmail. And also uh, a, a nice way would be they could visit at the same time through my Facebook group. They can certainly send a direct message. So I think there's several ways to get, get in touch and I look forward to hearing from anybody. The last thing I had wanted to mention, cause I don't wanna forget, the, the reason this is called the first annual Antoinette Marie Williams exhibition is because I have no idea what kind of direction it's gonna take if it does it'll do something else. But the point is with me doing that is there's gonna be a second annual. I want this to go on for as far into the future as it might not always be this, but it's always going to be in Antoinette's name. So whatever mm-hmm. guest I have each year, whatever format it takes, whatever it is, it's still going to be the second annual. So this is a way of honoring <laughs> Antoinette and just having one more thing in, in her name. So I was really, that was very much on my mind. That's that's fantastic. I saw recently in Jamaica, they had the Antoinette Alley. Yeah, you know, that was great. Viewers about that, Antoinette? Well, it, um Joseph Issa, who um, sponsors the tournament, he, the first year that they had it, I, they needed a ramp. It's uh, the clubhouse is on the second floor where they play back at. And there were, there's no access for me to get to the second floor. So Joseph built this humongous ramp. And, and I, I talk about it as, being like the the Monaco Grand Prix. It is <laughs> wide enough. It is wide enough for me to zoom up the ramp and zoom down the ramp at a high speed. <laughs> <laughs> so this year, this year he decided that they were gonna name that area after me. And they named it Antoinette Alley. And they put up two signs on each side, two plaques on each side, 
of the of the building let's say Antoinette Alley. So it was a nice celebration, it was a ribbon cutting ceremony and people said kind words about me. And fortunately, all of this has been done before I expire, that I'm still around, on that. That I'm still around <laughs> to, to enjoy the accolades. Yes, yes, that's fantastic. Congratulations. Well-deserved, of course. And for the viewers who are not familiar, Arda Fendikoglu is one of the premier backgammon tournament directors in the world, originally from uh, Turkey. And I've done an interview with him so people can watch that. And also Gammon Village. I think if you want to buy a backgammon board, this is they have the most diverse variety of boards. Um, I did a yes, video on that too. Yeah, they're, they're fantastic. I highly I'm recommend it. I'm a customer it. of theirs, and I've got boards. I got all the boards from my club from them, and uh, their customer service is fantastic. Carolyn and Wayne are both, they're the nicest people, and they're, they're just excellent, and they're very reasonably priced. I would highly recommend them. Yeah. And I, I also, think... also yeah. let me interject that there, that there are others that are, that are sponsoring us as well, um, the Chris Lloyd, Chris Lloyd is giving donations. Um, and who else, Peter? Forget uh, who else. I, and I wasn't even sure Chris Lloyd was confirmed or I'd have mentioned it, but that's great. Um, I couldn't be happier to hear that. Um, I don't know. Well, and from the back camera community, I think that's about it. Well, it'll be, I think, private donation, where, but the uh, in terms of the big companies and so forth, I think it's Chris Lloyd, the, the merit with Fargo's help and uh, Gavin Village. So far, I think yeah. we, we might get more. We're trying. Yeah, cross That's everything. Cross. <laughs> That's fantastic. For the viewers that are not familiar with the Chris Lloyd boards, I recently did an interview with Jeff Caruso, the CEO, and they've been making boards for decades. And they're they're fantastic. They're known for the cork surfaces, which are unique. But now they're they're starting to use felt surfaces. He told but me they first thing... started using it in in Jamaica. Yes, right, but one... Antoinette. Yes, yes. But one thing Phil Simborg always says that he hates. Chris Lloyd boards because they never wear out. So, so <laughs> I'm passing that time. along. They last a long time. They're fantastic. Well, many okay, thanks well, to wonderful. Chris Lloyd. Many thanks to Chris thanks Lloyd. To Chris Lloyd and all the sponsors. Yes. Great. And Thank you both, my two good friends, Antoinette and Pete, for joining me. Uh, I'm excited about this. First, uh, Antoinette Marie Williams challenge. Congratulations. Looking forward to it. We'll go ahead and conclude the video. Thank you to the viewers for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Let me know what you think in the comments below, what you like to see in future videos, and I'll work on it. And if you love Backgammon, you can become a member of this channel, giving you exclusive access to the most popular videos. Again, my book, Backgammon, Backgame Strategies, is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested in lessons, please contact me via email. My email address is also in the description. I look forward to seeing you in future videos. And until then, keep rolling your dice.